conference mm-hmm. in uh, AFRICOM, uh, held uh, hosted by AFRICOM, which was flat out amazing. Um, there's, they have, it was only their second year doing the conference, and there were 25 nations represented, uh, over 50 people there. Um, they are from the continent. There were master chiefs of their navies, uh, sergeant majors of their army, and of their entire defense force. Uh, were there. Uh, the, the U.S. Army Sergeant Major uh, came over, Dan Daly. Uh, he came and he was part of the uh, event as well as uh, UCOM, uh, which is uh, Chris Addington. Yes. Um, NATO, I mean, this is set, I'm, just, I'm just dropping names so people understand how big a deal it was. Mm-hmm. Um, the senior enlisted leader for NATO, all of NATO, is a guy named uh, Davor Paddock. Okay. Super duper good guy. Kind of a hardcore CrossFit type of functional fitness type. Uh, you of would somebody. have to be. You have to be on some next level of like functionality to be in, in, in a position like that. <laughs> and he's wicked smart. So he is. Um, uh, English is probably his third language. Okay. Uh, and so for him um, to be the type of man, type of leader, he is just super duper smart. Uh, so he was there, um, as well as as well as many others. And so it is a uh, very. Uh, humbling opportunity to to spend time uh, with that group of leaders. The uh, AFRICOM uh, Senior Enlisted Leader Symposium is a bit different than the Eurasian Partnership um, that we have here of uh, course, that yeah. I host. Uh, well, could, because we've been doing this for uh, seven years and uh, Fleet Master Chief Joanne Ortloff began the program and what we have is more uh, conversation, a sharing one to another. Uh, how can we uh, work better together? What training opportunities are there that we can influence? And then what is it that uh, we can do into the future to get better? The AFRICOMS conference is really more of an opportunity to kind of set expectations. Here's my commitment to you. Um, what is your commitment to me? Uh, and then after that, I had the opportunity to uh, go down and uh, say farewell to a great friend of mine, Doug Arterburn. Uh, mm-hmm. He is uh, just retired. He'll, he will have uh, completed 26 years when he's, when he's all said and done. Uh, so I had a chance to go down to uh, Siganilla and uh, see some old friends and reconnect and communicate with people down there, as well as uh, you know speak at his retirement ceremony, which kind of turned into a little miniature you know Q and A session afterwards. Oh, uh, really? That's, that's, that's pretty know, exciting. There, the, I think that <clears throat> when we have the opportunity to. Um, to see the Master Chief of the Navy, to see one of the you know four you know, billeted Navy Fleet Master Chiefs, uh, or you have a chance to see you know Chris Addington who was up at UConn. Mm-hmm. You you should have questions prepared, and you should you should ask you know the things that you want to know, whether it's a uniform question or something about the uh, dynamic force employment, or which we'll talk about later with regard to Harry S. Truman, uh, or if it's about one of the many Sailor 2025 programs. Blended retirement system. I mean, there's yeah, so you many. You don't want you don't want to miss this chance with these with these uh, very influential uh, people to like, you know, you could be seeing them for whatever reason, like like you said, but yeah. you have questions. And that, that is the time. Yeah, I mean, so, someone once said we, and I agree that that we know not because we ask not. I so say you got to have the questions, uh, and you should always be prepared. You know, if I ever come across this person, here's what I want to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, in the, uh, the in, in in our Navy, it is our uh, responsibility to have a questioning attitude. Every single uh, sailor should have a questioning attitude, not just uh, be a rubber stamp yes to every single thing. Um, maybe start with yes, uh, validate your yes, and then fight on. Um, but we should all have questioning attitudes. So here in the fighting fleet, we have got uh, a plenty uh, going on. Never, and, never short of a of a exercise or something. Uh, you know, and I was having an interesting. Gosh, kind of, finally you say exercise, right? So I was having an interesting conversation with Command Master Chief Jim Wallace, uh, who was telling me that at Sixth Fleet they have or they do uh, participate one way or another seventy exercises a year. And I just couldn't wrap my mind around it. And I was like, and I was giving him the, what? No, I was giving lot. him the stink face. You probably can't see it on the radio, but <laughs> kind of giving him that face like, like you're lying to me. Like, do 70? I believe you? I believe you, but I, I feel like I can't believe you, you know? <laughs> How can I verify, validate, substantiate that comment? And so, um, but, but when we think about the number of ships that transit through here, mm-hmm. 
uh, the ships that come over on deployment. So we have our the four DDGs uh, in Rota. We have uh, in the area, uh, we have the uh, USNS Trenton. We have Mount Whitney. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those six ships, certainly not you know that many exercises. But then um, we look at what is happening um, with the ships that are transiting through and all of the relationships that we have uh, throughout the NATO countries and our other partners and friends down on the continent and in Europe, then... Yeah, I can kind of see how that happens. Yeah, definitely. I kind of see how like that all the ships that come through to, to go to wherever they need to go. Sure, and, and so they can be passing through. And in, in the old, and as recently as last year, it would be they're passing through. Uh, now they're pretty much coming to stay and fight. Uh, however, as they're making their way through, or coming over initially, we'll do an exercise uh, with a, a, uh, another maritime force, uh, or perhaps we'll provide some top cover for a, a ground event that's going on. Uh, and so the satisfying thing is that there is uh, so many opportunities for us to participate, whether it's uh, strictly maritime or air to air or uh, surface to air and so forth. So, yeah. And Ooh. so um, we have uh, Harry S. Truman uh, back in theater and a, a good portion of the uh, striking forces that come along, you know, with the high value unit. Uh, that are participating as well uh, and it puts the number of uh, you know souls you know participating in that exercise um, 50 to 70,000 so that that's uh, pretty darn exciting a lot of uh, you know rolling uh, artillery uh, a lot of unbombered Humvees a lot of folks living you know out on the land uh, mm-hmm. learning some pretty um, fierce lessons if I may uh, about being north of the uh, the Arctic Circle. I know. Quick little uh, interjection. I hopped on the, the NATO Instagram, and they're they're pretty good. NATO Instagram is great oh, yeah. if you don't follow it. Oh, yeah. And they had the like uh, they had uh, chiefs, like senior chiefs, on there eating out of the MREs. That's right. Kind of just uh, talking about it. Super fun. Just watch them all work together like that. And, and it's it's so full. As I said earlier, it's just it's just shockingly fulfilling to have the opportunity to get with a, a group of folks who have the same goal in mind as you, but just maybe a different technique mm-hmm. uh, and a different mindset on how to get there. You know, so the way a uh, you know someone from from Norway, Sweden, Finland, you know, deal with the cold, shockingly different than somebody from Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the Floridians would be like, "What is going on? Where yeah, are we? You know, why is it so cold?" I mean, I understand physics, but uh, so as we were talking about off air, one thing that is important for me uh, to convert to to to, to influence or to, to uh, highlight is that the engineers in the nuclear power plant on the aircraft carrier have got to be loving life. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about you know at what is the max capability you know of a weapon so when i come inside the gate i'll ask what's the max capability of their weapon uh and the effect maximum effective range is you know 50 meters for example um but the maximum range is 1500 meters right mm-hmm. so because uh, i'm more accurate you know at close distance but the fact of the matter is this you know projectile can go this far when it comes down to the nuclear power plant okay we can uh, run the plant for you know x amount of time that is the uh, maximum range, but the max effective range, you know, because of the uh, uh, the content of the water that they process through and the temperature is a lot lesser. So the maximum maximum uh, effectiveness of the plant um, is reached when you have cool and clean water. Yes. <laughs> that is exactly Ideal. what they have right now. So I'm uh, crisp. There, and there are a group of Marines uh, and soldiers who intentionally go up and train uh, in those cold weather areas, which which um, speaks to the tight relationship that uh, the Marines and the uh, Army have uh, with the ground forces up there mm-hmm. uh, because it, their training is constant and there's just things that they know that we don't know. So uh, the honor, uh, to, as I said earlier, to live out the purple line of effort uh, is here absolutely uh, in this uh, in this theater. The USS New York is here, and I've talked about the New York uh, maybe a month or so ago mm-hmm. uh, after visiting with them in, in uh, NAFA. <clears throat> uh, Florida ship in NAFA had a chance to visit. Oh, by the way, they're back here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second most, uh, the second highest uh, operational tempo uh, in our Navy. So and that ship is wasn't underway. that them that talked all that smack to you? You said <laughs> to just wait till just wait till we get out Watch there. Watch to see what happens when we get back. Yeah. Uh, so here they are, you know, back and a part of this exercise, the opportunity uh, to get some liberty in Iceland. Uh, that's a place that most people don't have the opportunity mm-hmm. to go. So they're doing that, uh, handled themselves on liberty well, which is important to me. Uh, performing the exercise 
guys, and then I'm very confident uh, the rest of their deployment, they'll have the opportunity to make their way back into the Mediterranean, or perhaps if called upon all the way over to uh, the Persian Gulf. And that goes back to uh, the, uh, the exciting thing about our fighting force, is that we can bring you know, U.S. sovereign territory pretty much anywhere on the planet. The, the earth is 70% covered in water, right? Mm -hmm. So we can bring this U.S. sovereign territory uh, and our partnerships and our uh, relationship and reputation you know, off the coast of pretty much everywhere. Uh, and so New York, Gunston Hall, and the rest of the ships uh, that are uh, here on deployment in support of either the exercise or our normal deployment uh, are here as part of the fight. So the uh, the enlisted, so we had Lay in the Keel, uh, which came out, and our team here was a super duper big part of that. Mm -hmm. I happened to be. I remember uh, those many drafts of it I saw. Uh, oh my gracious, yes. But the, at the base of it all, right, the actual keel itself is the uh, enlisted leader development. So for years and years, we've had petty officer indoctrination one way or another. <clears throat> Um, and now we have changed or we're modifying that to the enlisted leader development uh, program. Uh, what's going to happen uh, we have, as we have revamped it completely, we're, doing a, we're, we're training the trainer. So in various different places around the Navy, around the world, literally, um, there are uh, facilitators that come out and they actually certify um, chiefs and senior chiefs to be the uh, facilitators of this particular course. They were just here uh, a couple of weeks ago, so I had the opportunity to uh, visit with the, um, the trainers, if I may, and we were talking about the opportunity to uh, have a legacy, you know, that, that, that goes on for years and years. Uh, Wes Koshoffer, uh, who is the uh, Master Chief at the um, at the war at the Navy Naval Navy War, war College. Navy War College. <clears throat> he has uh, actually been named. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Wes, on your selection as the uh, newest uh, Fleet Master Chief. He'll be rel relieving uh, Mick Pond uh, Smith in the position oh, yeah. uh, over at uh, MPTE uh, Manpower Training and Education. So super hype. He uh, again, you know, extremely extremely smart, fantastic visioneer, uh, and uh, did a great job with this enlisted leader development. Um, and that is coming to life. So we're looking forward to seeing more about that and have you, have you watched that like from you know from seed to like fruition the whole thing right what well, yes and so to see the training take place and then after the training again we're training the trainer right yeah um those folks are really staying united uh, so we talked about you know my language fellowship and the suffering um well that course is hard by the way mm -hmm. and it's absolutely not a giveaway the good thing is that those uh, instructors or facilitators are staying very tightly woven as they consider how can you know, they increase the momentum as we get this out to the over 200,000 enlisted sailors. So it's exciting. Just right now, I uh, got an email uh, from Command Master Chief uh, Jonas Carter. Uh, he is the Command Master Chief on board Harry S. Truman right now. And so it, how apropos that we get an email from him, he says, um, He's uh, been trading emails uh, with uh, Command Master Chief J.J. Gonzalez, who is the Sixth Fleet uh, Command Master Chief. Yes. Um, talked about how you kn knew him from days gone by. Mm -hmm. uh, but he says to me, and the most important thing I just want to say into the hearing of everyone. So last time I was at the three-star, four-star conference, I talked to them about this. And he's just validating it. And that is that uh, the crew is good. Morale is high. And families are trying to figure out how to support the dynamic force employment. Um, so for those who haven't heard about it, the dynamic force employment is we have we're just a non-standard deployers now. Mm -hmm. So when I was a, it's just a raffle, um, it was just like random. Well, it, it's 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 from the outside. I want it to look like it's yeah, random. exactly. Uh, from from our building, from very a, specific. Yeah, from a from a, a strategic way, it's it's Correct. very hard to predict. Yeah, operation op, from exactly. Yeah, st uh, tactically, you you have no idea. Yes. Um, from the operational and strategic level, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I got something for you. Right. So it's, it's, it's not like running trick plays, you know, in some sort of sporting event because we're very intentional about this. Um, but what the families have to deal with just differently than days gone by is the fact that, okay, I'm gonna, instead of doing a nine month deployment, I'm going to do three months, I'm going to come home for a month, and I'm going to go back out for five or four, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for um, ombudsmen and for the family readiness group, it's certainly important to be there uh, and, and, and fellowship. And relationship with the families and so while I'm talking about that uh, I just like to appreciate 
uh, the Ombudsman uh, Food and Family Support Center uh, that helps coordinate the Ombudsman events uh, and the, uh, the quarterly you know, uh, meetings that they have, usually hosted by uh, Captain Abrahamson uh, here in the Naples area and COs around our Navy. Uh, though that volunteership is important. And very, very soon, if they haven't already, I just don't know, um, they'll announce the Ombudsman of the Year. Uh, and the Sixth Fleet Ombudsman uh, last year, as you know, was the Ombudsman of the Year for the Navy Shore. Uh, Navy. Yeah, that's incredible. So, yeah, super big deal. I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to, uh, to, to kind of shout out FDRMC, right? So the mm -hmm. Ford Deploy Regional Maintenance Center, super duper important group of people. I uh, visited one of the ships who had a, a, a ship's casualty that was more than what they could repair on their own. And uh, the team from FDRMC uh, was able to come out uh, and, and assist and really take over their repair. I mean, they are the subject matter experts. And we were just talking about this during the break too, right. when, before we, uh, you know, when you, when you thought about bringing them up and just how you guys are so proficient because it's what they do. Right, right. And, and guys and girls, you know, and, sorry. And that, and that, you know, for a sailor to be able to go, you know, become rating competent on their sh on their ship or shore, um, working in their profession, it, it's, it's uh, uh, an honor, you know, to be able to do that. And then, as the Navy sees fit, and we redevelop shore facilities that allow them to maintain that rating competency, super duper important. So uh, across yeah. many platforms too. Exactly, and, and and so I grew up on an aircraft carrier as a data processing technician, what we would call IT these days, and from there the opportunity to go to. Uh, a shore facility like the um, the Surface Intermediate Maintenance Activity, SIMA, from days gone by. Mm -hmm. um, maintain my proficiency, maybe get my finger in the belt loop of a, a civilian or a senior enlisted, go back out to ships and do repairs on those ships or do maintenance on those networks. Mm -hmm. And then when it's my turn to rotate back to CG to go to a ship, my proficiency is through the ceiling. And what we understand is there's still opportunities to do that. Uh, and so if you're an aviation and perhaps you are uh, you, you're going board a ship then you go to shore duty to an aviation intermediate maintenance depot mm -hmm. learn how to how to do depot level maintenance well the next time you go back to a ship your proficiency is really high your ability you know apt to teach is important uh, so your ability to, to do that is really high and so um, we're looking for opportunities to continue to do that so it there used to be a magazine called uh, link magazine uh, it was this old blue periodical that would come out in the back of it. It would be, a, there was a portion that said, you know, come to my command. Uh, and it was basically uh, command's opportunity to say, come here because, you know, here's what we've got going on. Yeah, here, uh, here, here's like what you have a chance to do. Right. And if I can plug here. FDRMC, that's exactly what I would do. We need, uh, and, and I, I don't know what the billing structure is, but for that person, you know, who's listening, you want to figure out how can you uh, be a part of a, uh, a fantastic organization that's having a real impact in the most kinetically relevant area on earth. FDRMC Naples. Uh, you get on the internet machine, talk to your detailer in the mm -hmm. detailing marketplace, uh, figure out how you can at least apply or get more information about it. So um, I know we're running up on time here, but I know you have some books that you want to get at because oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. leaders so, are readers. Or leaders are readers, exactly right. So I, I just, um, so a senior chief buddy of mine challenged me to read um, No Better Friend, uh, No Worse Enemy, uh, which is a book about. Um, the Secretary of Defense, uh, retired General Mattis, mm -hmm. and super good book, crazy head start on me, so I just finally got it downloaded to my Kindle, so I'm about a, a week behind in reading, uh, but hopefully I can uh, catch up. I'll definitely read the entire thing, but that's a book, you know, for, for those of you who are uh, looking to increase your bookshelf, um, No Better Friend, No Worse Enemy, uh, it's about uh, General Mattis. Uh, I've been uh, carrying around uh, Ghost Fleet, um, which is a um, uh, usually I'm a non-fiction reader it's a fictional book yeah. however it has been referred to um, by many leaders who I respect Admiral Fogo Admiral Brady uh, CNO have all referenced oh, yeah, this book. I would definitely listen to those <laughs> to them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they, and they, they know some things. They do. They do. They have certainly uh, read a few things. They just kind of casually mention the book, and I'm like, oh, I better write that down. Yeah. Uh, so I got it now. Uh, and so uh, if you're uh, interested in uh, reading, you're welcome to join me in those two books. Those are the two things that are on my radar, and I plan on finishing being complete um, with that reading. Uh, by Thanksgiving. So uh, if you're going to read, don't be a punk. Read it, read it fast, uh, take in information, take notes, and then be ready to have a conversation about it when you see me.